Now, install for system means that the user is never going to see any of the dialog boxes. If I say install for users, then they will be able to see it. If I have it down here, I'll say if the resource is the device, install it for the resource, otherwise install it for the user. So I can see the dialog boxes, I don't see the dialog boxes. Um, I, if I'm doing an install for system, I can also specify whether or not a user has to be logged on. I can say they have to be logged on, I don't care, or they can't be logged on. Those are my three options. Then I can say the installation program, is it visible or is it not visible? I can say it's maximized, it's normalized, it's minimal, minimized, or it's hidden. You gotta be really, really careful when you push this out to user accounts if I have this hidden, because if it pops up a dialog box that asks a question, they can not only not answer the question, they're not even going to see it. Now, if I go in and I say, um, I wanna push this out for a system, what, uh, and I wanna do it only if a user's logged on, and then I say it is maximized, even though I'm pushing it out to a system, they will still be able to see it. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that they can interact with it. A lot of times, these installations, they run completely unattended. But here's the thing. If I have an installation, it's failing. It just doesn't work. And I don't know why. I've done everything, and I don't know why. Push it out to the system, but make it visible. Then set up that system and watch the deployment happen. You will be able to see the dialog boxes as they pop up. And even if you don't have to click on them, at least you'll be able to see them. Then you go in and you're like, oh, the dialog box is asking a question. No wonder it's failing. It's looking for interaction, but we don't have any type of interaction built into it. So that's how you can determine whether or not this is going to work for you. Um, I can put in a maximum allowed runtime. By default, it'll be two hours. I can also put in an esta uh, estimated installation time. That's useful because we can put in what's called maintenance windows. And if I have a maintenance window and my, uh, my experience is it's going to take about 40 minutes to install this, but I don't have 40 minutes left until the maintenance window, I will not install it. So this is, this is useful information. It'll tell you about how long it's going to take, what the maintenance window is, and the maximum amount of time. And if it's too close to the end of that maintenance window, it simply won't do it. Now it'll say, what do you want to do? Uh, regardless of the intended behavior, it'll say do it based on return codes. Or once it's done, do whatever you want. Once it's done, we're going to force the device restart. Once it's done, we're going to make the configuration manager client force a restart. So do you want this to restart even if the installation program thinks that, well, I don't have to? Well, we're going to make you uh, do the installation um, anyway. So it uh, works out really, really well. Um, did that, did that, did that. Uh, now we have the requirements tab. Uh, this is where I would set all of my requirements. And there's lots and lots and lots of requirements and we're gonna get into a lot more uh, detail on requirements um, a little bit later, but just to give you an idea, we have uh, requirements for devices, we have custom, we have user settings, and there are a lot of them. So we're gonna be getting into requirements um, in just a, uh, a little while, but I can put in more requirements in there. Uh, we can also go in and look at our return codes. These are the codes that is in there by default. Um, since this is off of Chrome, it can read the metadata, and if the programmers for this application were kind enough, they can pre-populate you with return codes. Otherwise, you can put in your own return codes. But this is nice because I know what they mean, and I know do I have to do a reboot, hard reboot, soft reboot, success, fast retry, and I can add my own return codes if I would like. This uh, return code is going to be 711, we'll say, and that is going to be a success. And we'll call it great success. And now it's set up in there as a great success. So that is our return code. Uh, the last one that we have is dependencies, and I can go in and I can say yes, uh, we need to have a dependency, and I can go in and I can add a software package. Uh, I can say, oh, yes, this will fill the dependency. And uh, then what will happen is, is if A requires B, 
when I deploy A, if I don't have B already installed, it will install B for me, and then it'll install A. And if B has dependencies, it'll install those dependencies. And if those dependencies have other dependencies, that have other dependencies, so on and so on and so on. You want to make sure that you don't end up with a big circle. This requires this, requires this, requires this, because then nothing will ever be installed. Uh, but uh, if you do have requirements that have dependencies, then the dependencies will also be included, which we have. All righty. And so that is, that's it. That's all the settings that we have right there. Now what we want to do is we want to create a deployment. So I have my application, but it's just sitting here. It's not doing anything cool. So I want to go through and I want to create a deployment. So the way that we do that, this is over on page 290. We're going to get into the software library. So we're in the software library. We have application management. We have applications. And then I'm going to pick my application, this guy right here. And I'm going to right click on it. And inside of here, I am going to, uh, I can go in and I can say, hey, I want to deploy it. So we will go ahead and pick deploy. I can also pick deploy up here. It doesn't matter one or the other. It's all the same. So here we have the name. We, uh, we don't have it assigned to any collection, but we don't necessarily have to do it as a collection. So I can go in and I can say, oh, yes, I'm going to assign it to the... Um, um, I can say user collections, or I can say device collections. Um, I'm going to push it out to the server devices, and that's what we have there. I can also say, let's go ahead and push this out to dependencies if necessary. So then I'll say next. It's going to ask me what content that I want, so I'll drop down and I will say, let's add this. I can say, we'll go ahead and grab this from a distribution point, or we can say a distribution point group. Now, normally, what you're going to want to use is a distribution point group because a distribution point group can contain multiple distribution points. So if I have, let's say, the, uh, the Phoenix site, and I want to make sure, because of uh, high availability, that I have multiple distribution points that they can go ahead and use, I can have that in this environment. And uh, what I do is I make them all point of a distribution, part of a distribution point group, push the application out the distribution point group, and it goes to all the distribution points. We'll show you how to make a distribution point group in just a moment. Right now, we're dealing with uh, distribution points. So I can add a distribution point. It'll say what distribution points do we have out there, and then I would go in and I would pick one, and uh, then um, it'll go ahead and populate which uh, distribution point or distribution point group we are going to go through and use. Um, then, uh, let me go ahead and cancel out of here. I'm going to add a distribution point group. We'll grab that one. So now I have my distribution point group. doesn't have any members. That's okay. Uh, then we'll get into our deployment setting. This is going to be an install action, but we can also do an uninstall if we need it. We also have a purpose where we're advertising it. It's available, but it's not mandatory. If we want to make it mandatory, we say it is going to be required. If we have it as set to require, um, look at the other options that we have. I can say, let's pre-deploy it. So even though you haven't installed it yet, we will go ahead and pre-deploy it to your primary devices. We can also send wake-up packets. So if I have clients that are off, I can send those magic wake-up packets to wake them up. And I can also say, do we want to allow people that have a metered connection to be able to download this. Metered connections are where I have told Microsoft, oh, by the way, I'm on a metered connection, so don't push updates to me automatically because I have to pay for all of that traffic. Uh, this is useful, for example, if I'm on a cruise ship, my data center's on the cruise ship, and I don't want them just downloading stuff whenever. This allows me to have control on when I want that to, uh, to pull down. So that is uh, what we have there. Then we go next, and we have the scheduling. We can do universal time, or I can do it based upon a time zone. I can schedule when it's available. By default, it'll be available as soon as possible. Uh, if I want to install it and make it a requirement, I can specify when we schedule it. I can also delay the enforcement based upon user preferences, and I can have a grace period that I've predefined. So I can say, okay, we'll let you do that. Uh, next we have is the user experiences. Do I notify you? It'll be in the software center and show notifications. 
or we just do Software Center and only show me in the notifications once the computer restarts, or we just simply hide it. Uh, if we reach the deadline, what do you want to do? We can install it. We can uh, restart it if we need to, um, and we will commit any changes uh, basically, basically during the maintenance window. So if normally it ends at midnight, but the maintenance window isn't until 2 o'clock in the morning, at midnight it's not going to try and do the installation. It will wait until 2 o'clock in the morning. So we have that. Uh, we also have alerts that can say uh, what's the threshold. In other words, how many do you expect to be able to have to call it a successful deployment? I want to be able to have 900 of these installed by a certain time on a certain day. You can pick and choose. Um, you can also say what's the threshold for a failed deployment. If I have any more than six machines that can install it, I will consider that a failure and I will hang my head in shame. This is mostly for reporting. I can also say, do we want to do maintenance mode? So if I have a system that's being actively managed by uh, configuration manager, uh, op or I'm sorry, by operations manager, then I can say, do we want to do maintenance mode? Now, here's the gotcha. It says enable maintenance mode. It doesn't enable maintenance mode. What it does, it shuts off reporting. So essentially, it's sort of like breaking into somebody's house and pulling out their phone. They can't call the cops, so apparently we're in maintenance mode. Same thing here. So it doesn't actually put something into maintenance mode. So if you have maintenance mode and high availability and... Uh, fault tolerance and clustering on your mind. Maintenance mode means something very, very specific. This is not maintenance mode. It just makes it so that the, the software that does the reporting is disabled. So it disables it. It does whatever it needs to. Reboots it a whole bunch of times. It's all freaking out. Ah, but it can't tell anybody because the software is disabled. And then once it has the stuff installed, then it re-enables the notification software. That's how maintenance mode works in System Center. We also have uh, go ahead and do an operations alert. By default, these will just notify configuration manager, but if you have operations manager on here and you want to be notified via operations manager if you have a failure, this is what it'll do. Now, uh, remember that uh, this does not replace operations manager. Operations manager is so much more, more robust for operations, plus it can work with things like the... Um, the, the orchestrator, so I can do automatic remediation. I mean, it has lots and lots and lots of very powerful features uh, for reporting that we just simply don't have with Configuration Manager. So we have that. Then I say next, and then it gives us our nice little summary of all of the 900 billion things that, uh, that we would deploy. And I would say next, and it'll go ahead and make it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to hit cancel because I already have this set up. Now, um, once you have this set up for deployments, um, you can go down, and on the bottom, they just have the summary. This is going to tell you the version and the devices with the application, all that. Plus, it also has a nice little, let me get my head out of the way, has a nice little chart that shows you how many successes you've had, how many are in progress, how many have failed. Um, just remember, because it says it's a success, doesn't mean that you've actually installed it anywhere. Let's say, for example, I have requirements set up, and I deploy it out, and it says 100%, but nobody matched the requirement. So what the 100% represents is of all the people who are eligible to install this, which is none, all that were eligible to install it installed it, which means no one was eligible to install it, and nobody installed it, so great success. So remember, success may not necessarily mean that it installed it to everybody. It could only mean it could mean that only a few people um, actually got those in there. 